What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area and the only place you can find William Acklin doing an interview in English. It's us. We did it. We gave the people what they wanted. They wanted William Acklin. We delivered at the draft. Sharks delivered, but it was because of us. And then the people wanted to hear from William, and we delivered again because we remain your number one source uh, for dick jokes and awesome player interviews. <laughs> Insight comes third. Yeah. We need the player dick jokes. Then we're, we've hit full. We did Eric Carlson. Well, we no, we need like the player to make months. a dick joke on, oh. the, on the podcast. Mm. And then we will have it mm. transcended which, beyond everything that we could. Which ever player imagine. do you think we can get that would, that would rip a dick joke on, on it? Brandon Coe, you're our only hope, buddy. <laughs> hey john leonard's back with the kudo we should try to get john leonard i don't i think john leonard's too pure to make a dick joke though mm. but we should try to get john leonard at some point mm. we should slide into one of his family members dms and ask because uh, we have yes. that ability now we've 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 gained a new power it's like ratchet and clank when you have your weapons and then like you can like upgrade them to new things yeah. our new upgrade is sliding into moms and sisters dms not opposed brothers and dads it's just all have been moms and sisters so far but anyway i have I have worked on uh, the, a dad for a current Sharks player. So, Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. If you're listening. Current Sharks player. You should player. be. Sir, get at us. Please. We did this call to action before, but please get at us. We would love to. We'll talk to you too. We don't care. We're not indiscriminate. Yeah. But today we're doing a mailbag because the content boys needed content. And we went to you for the content to give you the content. It's like that right. Simpsons joke. Who can prevent forest fires? You have selected you, <laughs> which indicates me. The correct answer is, is you. you. <laughs> Music time. You're locked on sharks. Your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me is always co-host JD, the Corey Hotline to my Gudger College. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna read you a bunch of words, the words that rhyme with Corey. Story. Montessori. <laughs> Would you rather be Gudger College or the Corey Hotline? Corey Hotline. <laughs> Corey Hotline's great. Corey Hotline's great, yeah. Gudger College is really funny because it turns out, sorry, we all didn't go to Gudger College. That whole scene is amazing when Marge is like stuffing the box of Allied Biscuit. Now you've sent them into a tie for six with Allied Biscuit and table time. She's like, ah. oh, yeah, here's a picture. Here's a door. Use it, Homer, in the background. That's a door? <laughs> well, that's worthy of Webster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cornstarch. All right. <laughs> it's good for keeping down the urges. <laughs> we're just okay. Whole episode. We're not even gonna do mailbag now. We're just gonna do our yeah. We should just quote, quote The Simpsons. One day when we I uh, fired or quit, probably fired. We should just release like forty five minutes of us talking about The Simpsons. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, we'll but, have to get a special guest for that one too. So, yeah. Yes. Anyway. We'll have to get a Simpson. A Simpson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OJ, <laughs> Ashley. Palmer, <laughs> they're all good. <laughs> oh my God, it's you, the dweeb. <laughs> no, the, the, the dud. <laughs> all right. I love, I, love dud. The dud. I love the dud memes too. <laughs> all these good questions. We got a lot of good questions. Yeah, we did. Let's get to the mailbag. JD is the adult in the room. Uh, we talked about his kid shitting his pants uh, when they were babies. So that's how you know he's an adult because he's cleaned up baby poo. Yep. I have not. So he has all the questions. He's going to ask them. Let's go. Uh, at Darren Coates 3S, do you think Bob's criticism of the third defensive pairing and subsequent scratching of one of them for Hadika opens the door for the other half to also get scratched in the near future? We touched on this on yesterday's episode. Uh, but yeah, I think... It has to, right? I mean, you've you ba- Bob basically said like 
both of them are worthy of being scratched. So if they both continue to play bad, you got to scratch both of them. Neither of them are worthy of Webster's. <laughs> Neither of them are worthy of Webster's. Right? Uh, Unless you look under uh, bad. <laughs> poor. The poor. Uh, I don't. That's that's getting really far down the road. If they scratch both of them, that's that's a complete failing of roster construction. Uh, well, not a complete failing of roster construction. You're kind of tied with who you have. Yeah. But um, well, I guess that's roster construction. But I mean, like, I don't think we saw either of them falling off the cliff this hard. But that I don't I don't either. think both of them are getting scratched for a little while longer. That's pretty drastic because that means they would have to call somebody up and play Hataka. Maybe when Ke- Kenijov comes back. Uh, yeah, that then you. I think that's when the real question is asked. So is when Kanishov gets back. So yeah, if, yeah. If 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 Hadika is playing well during that time and kind of establishes himself, and then you get Kanishov back, and then like Kanishov slides back up with um, with Carlson, Carlson, and then you and have like Middleton. a Middleton um, Hadika line like defensive pair. I could I could get down with that. So yeah, I yeah yeah. <laughs> How did Tataka has not played that great so far? So, yeah, but it means uh, that, that's a big issue. Three games, so yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a little more leash. But I think I think that's a that's a that's more of a Christmas conversation, probably. Yes. Okay. Um, at use dash Schwartz eleven asks, what kind of turn would you try to sign Darlene or Ferrara to if the cap if the Sharks have cap space uh, to burn versus current cap set? Basically, um, what type of contracts are you signing these guys to? So um for the hell out of ferraro <laughs> yeah uh, just just give them the give them like the three by three or something like that just eat those eat those years and try yeah. to be like look you don't provide much offense <laughs> uh you play strictly defense and you're playing beside brent burns we need to see a little bit more and, and give him a raise into that those low millions um but i don't think i mean he's an alternate captain though do you just sign him to like seven years seven is a little well, that's what you got to do. Yeah, but uh, I'm trying to like, what's his comp? That's the question, right? Is like, because seven years is a long, but I don't know. I think, I think we see, because like with players like this, you kind of like the Sharks have that formula, right? Where it's like, okay, they get out their ELC and then like Hurdle got like a four year deal, right? Timo got like a four year deal, something like that. So I think you're going to see him get a raise. Um, probably, you know, I would speak like a four by four. And then not the worst. I think, yeah, I think you live with that. Yeah. Um, you know, he doesn't provide much offense, but then he gets, he's in a new contract year when he's like 27, 28. And then you kind of see where you're at then. So by then a lot of your other contracts will come, the Burns contract will be off the book. The elastic contract will only have seven more years <laughs> left. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you'll be, you'll kind of, you'll be in a different guy. You're going to have a bunch of young guys, you know, like, your Eklund's and your Bordelos and all these guys where you're going to be kind of in a different situation. So I would, I would do like a four by four, see where you're at after that. So I, th- I think that's fair. Uh, if you can even get like a three by three and, yep. and do something in that range, I don't think signing him to the big long contract and definitely don't pay him a ton of money because he's a defensive defenseman. It's not, he could just be bad at defense or like hit the cliff or something like that. Yep get an injury, then he provides no value. I think you got to keep that bridge RFA and Doug doesn't mess around with RFAs. Yeah. Um, and it's same thing like Darlene, I would almost kind of go with the bolsters route, right? Where it's like, okay, you did it one year. Here's like two years. Yeah, and then Yeah. We'll but I don't think it's going to work <laughs> with yeah. Dahlin. Dahlin's way better than Rudolph bolsters ever has been. Um, and Dahlin tore up the all fan skin. Like he's, I think he's got a much stronger position. Like mm-hmm. he, he's, 23 and balsers is where are you rudy 24 24 but rudy was traded then waived claimed i i, I just think with dalian especially how well he's played the early in the season if he puts up a really good rookie campaign i, I think you probably got to go with like a five-year contract or something like that yeah and then if one of those maybe you you might kind of if this is his floor and you're paying um and then all of a sudden he might be outperforming that contract too if you get him at a reason. Yeah, I just I just don't know if he takes the one year. I mean, he's had a long road to get to the NHL. So if Makes it's sense. his only option, it's his only option. But I just don't think they would do that with him. So 
I yeah, maybe that's why. Yeah, but again, it's one of those things because you're going to be they're still going to be tied up with money right now going into next season. So, uh, they're but tied yeah. up with money for a long time. <laughs> for a long time. So, we'll this will be a I we really, have plenty of time to discuss really, this. Yeah, and I really think it depends on if Hurdle gets resigned, obviously, and then Kane, that's the big two one. big things. So if they can, if they can convert Tomash's five point six two five into Kane's seven million dollars, and then that frees up, and then get rid of Kane somehow, and that frees up like five million more bucks then I think you kind of try to give that like three and three to each of them. Makes sense. Maybe, yeah. maybe give, maybe give Dolan a two year deal, like a, like a three by two. Um, Hey, need you to do it more. Like you said, I don't think the one year is going to work though. Yeah. Well, he's, he's, got two he's years, on the top so. line. Yeah. Yeah. Bolster's also got, Bolster's got two years. One at $5 million. Like it's like, pff, thanks yeah. buddy. We like you, but like we know what you are. <laughs> Darlene, Darlene's on the top line. Like, there's no two ways around it. Darlene is is going to be asking for a lot more money than Rudy or Bear Banoff or any of those guys would or could have. Yep. All right. Before we get to our next one, Kyle, we got to pay the bills. And there's. Do you know how you can pay bills? By gambling. <laughs> this seems like a very lucrative way. Actually, no, you shouldn't do that. You should never do that. That's bad advice. But if you have your bills under control and you have a little disposable income and you want to bet, you can go to betonline.ag because they are back and better than ever. They have a new web interface for the start of the basketball and hockey season. They have more props, more odds, more lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season in hockey. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code LOCKEDON to receive your bonus from basketball, football, hockey, boxing, footy, horse racing probably, UFCA, it's UFC, your favorite Vegas casino game. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Next question, also from uh, use that Schwartz Eleven. Do you guys think any teams trading for Kane next offseason, or even if salary change, should they wait for the buyout announcement? Blah 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 blah. No. If you're trading for Kane, <laughs> you have to attach an asset to get rid of him at this point. So, and are you one willing... asset or like four? You're gonna you're having to attach stuff to get rid of him at this point. So. Um, I think, I mean, again, we're still a couple weeks out before we know what the Sharks are going to do with Kane. He's back uh, soon, right? Yeah, at the end of the month. So, um, I think we are both in the, he should never, he should not come back this year. And then you try to figure out something in the off season. But, um, yeah, if you're trading for him, especially on a team that you're still, I know you're resetting right now, but you still want those assets to try to, you know, draft players, especially with how good the Sharks have been in drafting. Well, recently, I think it's, I don't know, you, you try to buy him out or you try to figure something else out. So, yeah, no, I don't think anybody to get Nobody's to the, touching the question. I don't think anybody's trading for him. If they do, you just send him off for whatever they offer you. Yeah. Who you, cares? Yes. <laughs> but I don't, I honestly, honestly don't think that anybody's going to trade for him this year in the offseason. I doubt it as well. Stranger things have happened and dumber things have happened. Uh, so there totally could be. But like right now, in this moment of time, who is trading for him? Nobody. Nobody. Uh, Jim listen. Benning, come on down, baby. <laughs> we need Peter Trelli back in the, a GM's position. <laughs> Pierre Maguire take over for Pierre Dorian in Ottawa. Mm, and we they, need, we need one of these guys. Oh, Pierre, do it. Oh, yeah, Pierre on Pierre crime, get it done. Oh, we can send Gain off. Oh, it'd be so great. Oh my God, we would. I think that episode we would just cackle for twenty five minutes. <laughs> I think I think Kane also has a no trade clause. Yeah, uh, uh, he, he's got like a limited or whatever. He's got a modified no trade clause. Player submits a list of three teams he can be traded to. So there's only three options. Nobody's but, trading for him. Yeah, I think though if uh, yeah, that, that's a. I, I think if they go to him, and be like, "Listen, you're never playing for us again, and we have a team that wants you," he'll probably just say, "Yeah." Yeah. So, or else you're just gonna sit here and we're we'll never. Yeah. I mean, may, hey, it's awesome to get paid to do nothing. I would like to do that. So, all right, this is a fun one, actually. You're probably going to hate it. At SnipeCity420 asks, obviously, a slim chance uh, since he wants to win a cup and the relationship with Doug Wilson may be beyond repair, but Joe Pavelski is in the final year of his contract with Dallas. 
could he be a potential if the Sharks are actually pretty decent to maybe acquire, reacquire Joe Pavelski for a playoff run to kind of solidify that third line? I'm all for it. Bring Joe back. Bring bring Pavelski back. Kyle is, if you're not watching on YouTube, Kyle is uh, just looking angry and sad, and he hates Joe Pavelski. Noted Pavelski. Hater. He makes seven million doll hairs. So, but if it's at the end of the season, you just get him as a trade deadline acquisition and yeah who cares why <laughs> why, why do we have to do this <laughs> why not why can't we just let the dead die <laughs> fuck what is dead may never die <laughs> no he fully died we saw him we saw him but he resurrected the body <laughs> game seven <laughs> Uh, we don't need to. Let's move forward into a new Sharks era. We have William Eklund. They have a bunch of other prospects coming their way. They staked their claim. They chose Eric Car- <laughs> They chose, sorry, no, whoa, they, they, they chose Evander Kane. And look how well that turned out. You see, you could right all the wrongs by bringing Joe Bavelski back, making a oh, glorious he, he underdog. Dog and getting in as a wild Patrick card. Marvel. Joe Pavelski leading this underdog eight seed but he's not leading them he would be a deadline acquisition to hang out on the bottom six oh, and be man. like guys remember when i was the captain <laughs> nick does he have to give back the c does couture have to give back the c I'm oh they would it. probably do some bullshit where couture is like i'm i can't wear the c because pavelski's <laughs> back or something oh my god i hate all of this and he also he makes seven million dollars let's get out of here I'm what are you for trading it. for 30 30- Seven thousand year old Joe Pavelski. How old is this man? He is. Uh, the he is thirty seven. I got it right. The Penguins literally traded for uh, Patrick Marlowe. And look how well that turned out. Anyway, third round pick. Thank you. Uh, at Ryan McKinney one ninety eight asks if the Sharks are out of contention by the trade deadline. Besides Hurdle, who else would you like to see Wilson try to move? Uh, he suggests nailed to the ground. <laughs> uh, LeBanc, Shimmick, and Reimer. So. Well, it makes it be tough because he's been not doing uh, literally played on you know, demoted to the fourth line. Uh and he makes yeah, if the bank doesn't trade if the bank doesn't shape up here, nobody's taking him. He makes no. like four million dollars. That's gonna be a tough sell. Uh Shimek, nobody wanted him last year, nobody wanted him this summer, and nobody wanted him at the beginning of the year. I don't think he's going anywhere. Nope. Uh Reimer is a big one, competent yeah. veteran. Uh, backup goaltender that can go to a team uh, and solidify their net or much like the Sharks in 2016 where they traded for him and had him for their give their run. starter rest down the line. But Reimer is also signed for two years. So I don't know. They signed him for two With years because they want no him to play clause. here. For... <laughs> but why? <laughs> oh, it's five team, no trade list. But I think they traded but for it, him, yeah, for like I'm... him and Hale to stay tandem. So I don't think you would. Yeah, I don't think you'd be trading him, but they should if they're really that bad. They should. Uh, Burns, just try. If 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 the Sharks suck and they really need to move on, just try. Anything that's not nailed to the floor, basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just get Berkeley, Nieto, Cogliano, Benino. Which one of those guys was signed for multiple years? Benino or Cogliano? Benino. Benino. Okay, so trade Cogliano. He makes a million bucks. Yep. Bear Banoff, screw it. Yep. Yeah, Bear Banoff would be a nice addition to, uh, you know, especially a team's third line. You know, if you're a good team like Colorado's third line, having Bear Banoff there, like, yeah. So, yeah. You send Hurdle and, and, and Bear Banoff to the Colorado, <laughs> oh, and you, you get uh, some nice, juicy assets back. But any any of those guys that are like, they don't make a lot of money and they've been playing already, just just get, they don't figure into the long term plans. Just just try yep. to get rid of them. And then obviously, Shimmick can't go anywhere. Vlasic's not going anywhere. LeBanc, if he doesn't turn his value around, is not going anywhere. So, yeah. Yeah. At, uh, at Prairie Bilbo asks, who had the highest hype or upside uh, as a prospect between Eklund, Meyer, Hurdle, and Couture? I'm going to. Okay. So pass. it's not Hurdle. I'm going <laughs> to pass this one to you. Like, yeah. Hurdle was drafted like what? Like 15th or something? 15th like or that? 17th. I always forget where. Yeah. I always do this too. He was drafted uh, 17th overall and he was out of the Czech Republic. And I remember when they drafted him, people were like, who the hell is that? Not Hurdle. Who are the other names? Eklund. Eklund, uh, Couture, and then Timo Meyer. It's tough because Couture was drafted in 2007. Um, and in his draft year, he had 78 points in 54 games. So he had a really good season. Um, but like, 
were any of those guys potentially considered like the best player in the draft coming into the draft where Eklund was a lot of people actually said like, no, be no, the... because Logan Couture is in the same draft as Patrick Kane. Uh, who's who very good overall. James Van Riemsdyk was considered a, a top player in that draft. Uh, Turris, Jakob Voracek, um, Carl Alsner, uh, Sam Gagne, I'm pretty sure outplayed uh, Couture in his draft year as well. If I go down here, 2007, Sam Gagne, yeah, had 118 points in 53 games <laughs> in the same in the same league as Logan Couture. Very um, capable, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Couture was not considered the the best player in his draft, whereas Eklund could have been. Meyer also was not. Meyer was in the uh, the loaded draft class, and there's yeah. no shot he was even anywhere near the top um of 2015 like Myers draft just in case people don't remember went McDavid Eichel Eichel's also good Dylan Very Strong good. Mitch Marner Noah Hannafin Pavel Zaka Ivan Provorov Zach Wierenski, then Timo Meyer at nine and then immediately following him Miko Rantanen and he gets He's some good. bad picks but then you keep scrolling down here it just passed all this Boston this is where picks. Boston this is where Boston picks Zaboral DeBrusque and decision in a row and then you get Matt Barzel Kyle Connor Thomas Shabbat Joel Erickson, Ecker, old friend, Colin White, Ilya Samsonov, Brock Besser, Travis Konechny. Uh, who else is Anthony Bovillier went 28th. Uh, Nick Merkley went 30th. Good for him. So, yeah, lots of. Yeah. Sebastian Ajo went 35 <laughs> this draft. Yeah. So, um, like, the Eklund draft were like, there was a lot of scouts. It's a bad draft. Yes. Bad draft, weak draft. But, like, if you're just talking about the hype, a lot of scouts were like, oh, he is willing, he is deserving to be in the top draft pick of this year. How many times did we talk, you know, to people and they were like, you know, uh, you know, like all the forwards, oh, I could see him as a second line forward. I could, you know, like, you know, veneers and stuff like that. Like, oh, I could see him as a second line forward. And like, Eklund was like legitimate top line potential. So, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it was probably Eklund. Um, then you'd probably have to go with Couture, Meyer Hurdle. Meyer Hurdle, yeah. Hurdle would have been last for sure. Hurdle was not a, a hype machine. No. Uh, Garrett Larson1 asks, uh, how much will the third line being a defensively focused line hurt LeBanc's production or value? Um, do this? Is there actually a spot for Kevin LeBanc on this team? Clearly a lot because he got demoted to the fourth line. Yes. Yeah, and like he's he's a power I don't know why. A, Power play specialist at this point. Yeah, so. use him in an offensive role only. I don't, I don't know why we can't do that. I mean, we just, talked about it on the other day where it was like, okay, maybe swap him and Rudy. If you want to maybe try to get him going, swap him with Rudy, who Rudy can be a little bit more of your, you know, Swiss Army knife type player who can kind of play different roles while LeBanc is a purely offensive player. And if you want to try to get him going, have a bear bound off hurdle LeBanc line. So especially if you want to maybe try to pump and dump him, which I doubt you're going to be able to, but there you go got to protect him with some offense he's uh, putting him on the fourth line isn't going to do much yeah i mean we saw he produced pretty well last year when he was with the couture kane you know LeBanc line so yeah anyway uh at trivial for shot asks how many games until Benino gets a point <laughs> and when he finally does do you think points are gonna start pouring in or will it be a one and done for another dozen games there is no limit <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the famous Tony Snell graphic where it's like 28 minutes played, zero points, zero assists, zero, like it's just all zero. That's Nick Benino right now. <laughs> but I, I don't think the points are going to start pouring in once he gets one. No. That's just not a thing I think is going to happen, especially with the start that he's had. Uh, Nick Benino in his career, uh, going backwards, he had 26 points in 55 games, 35 and 67, 35 and 81, 25 and 71. Like we're not, he's not a point guy anymore. No. He never really was. So I don't think the points are going to start coring. It would be nice if he chipped in offensively even a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'll say he's. I'll I, say he gets game, the home stand. I'll say game eighteen. He gets his first point. I think uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Carolina game at home. So the second home stand game. So I'll say yeah. game eighteen. That's probably pretty close, actually. <laughs> You're probably, yeah. I wonder how many have they played? 14? Uh, it was a 15. So he's so. played 14. I say in his 18th game. So four more games for now. Hold on. I can tell you what that is. It's uh, I think that's the be... Sens game. Oh, perfect. We don't like the Sens in this house. It is the Sens game. So you're saying one game before me. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, Nick, we need you. You're our <laughs> only hope, Nick. You're not, but it'd be nice if you could try. All right. Uh, at Jackson Edward 38 asks, have you all started listening? 
y'all he actually did say y'all have y'all started checking out the 2020 draft eligibles if so who's realistically on your radar um i have not i've yeah famously uh i think we were gonna say we're gonna wait till after christmas until we start actually started to digging in but i know kyle is a nerd and has already looked at some of these guys so i think we answered this before some of the top guys but i think we gotta start looking at that creamy middle now for potential guys yeah so at the top you've got shane right the fight for right is on he's very good um you got ivan miroshinichenko russian uh my favorite one Yuri Slavkovsky, he's a winger. He's playing in Liga. He's like Slavic or something like that. He's sick. Mm. Uh, or Slovakian, I should say. Um, Joachim Kemmel, uh, he's also playing in Liga. Uh, he's on pace uh, to have one of the best U18 seasons ever in history in Finland's league. Um, Logan Cooley, David Yerchek, Connor Geeky, Matt Savoy. Lots of guys. Um, Very low to draft class. That's all. Yeah, that's all we keep hearing, so. Yeah, Brad Lambert has actually fallen down. He was the supposed heir apparent to Shane Wright. Uh, he's actually fallen. Um, mm. So if he doesn't pick it up, that could be a mid-round steal. Um, that Lambert to Eklund sounds very uh, fancy. So. Yeah, yeah, Lambert plays left wing. Uh, they play the same spot. Yeah. Uh, Simon, uh, Simon Nemec. Well, no, well, Eklund's going to be a center in the future. Oh, anyway, yeah, so. I forgot. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Simon, ne- Simon Nemec is kind of like an Eklund where he uses... Uh, um, his skating and his puck skills to evade checkers. Um, Frank Nazar is a USNT DDP TTPT guy. He's a center. Uh, he's a good two-way guy and he's a really good skater. Um, Tristan Luneau is in the middle. Marco Casper, Cutter Gauthier, R- Rutger McGrorty. That's, That's a great not name. A real person name. <laughs> That's not a real person. <laughs> He goes yeah. to Grinter College. Uh, he does go to Grinter <laughs> College. What about Denton Matichuk? Uh, there's, there's, there's Elias. Mom, Salo. can we get a Kachuk? We have a Kachuk at home. <laughs> Matichuk. Matichuk. Uh, there's Elias Salo uh who plays in Skellefte right now. Mm. He's a D. Uh, there, there's a couple of these guys in the middle, but um, it's still too early because the Sharks are kind of up and down right now. Uh, Jonathan Lekaramaki. He plays for U Garden right now. Mm, that was uh, actually Jackson Edwards guy he picked. So Jonathan Lecker Amaki. Yep. Oh, nice. So, anyway, look at I would say if you want a creamy middle guy, look up Frank Nazar right now. That's Frank with a K and then Nazar N A Z A R. Um it's kind of in Z the middle for non Canadians. All right. Um at Shig underscore gig asks, which of the current sharks prospects not already on the Barracuda? do you think will be NHL ready first? Not Is this the non-William Eklund division? Yes. Actually, I have someone before Eklund. T- Bordelo, baby. He's going to be here in April. There's no shot that they send William Eklund back to Sweden and then they let Bordelo waste a year of his ELC for like five games. Because NCAA guys, if they sign, yeah. it burns their ELC like Brock Besser style or Cole Caulfield or whoever. It, it burns up their year of their ELC if they get into a game. But you got to replace Nick Benino on the third line with Bordelow. Come on in, baby. Make that playoff run. <laughs> I think there's a. I think there's Benino a. Benino sh- that still does has zero points at that. Oh, my God. I think there's a real universe where Eklund and then either Bordelow and Robbins make the team next year. Yeah. Robbins might be too small. They might say he's too, too small, but he's absolutely burning down the league. Yeah. You can't. Um, God, could you imagine Robin? Oh, Darlene. Did, Center Ackland. Robbins. Uh, did they send Raska to the Cuda? Uh, or did they sent him home. Yeah. Oh, so he's, he's on the Cuda, so that doesn't count. Uh, I think Eklund, Robbins, Bordelow is probably your big three. I think Ozzy's gotten off to a slower okay start. start. Yeah, yeah, Robbins has absolutely been tearing up the WHL. He's like a two point of game, a yeah. two point of player game right now. In the the guy's a monster, and I don't think Gushin, <laughs> for as good as Gushin is, I don't think they're going to put him straight on the Sharks. He'll no, I think NHL. he'll play in the AHL for a little bit. So yeah, so it's definitely Eklund one because he's going to be on the Sharks next year. Eklund's never going to play for the Cuda, uh, and then uh, or he'll have a Mark Edward Vlasic like career where he plays one game and has two assists, which is <laughs> sick. Um, yeah, Eklund Robbins. Border lower the three year, I think right now that you've got to you've got to yeah. look at. All right. Uh, at edit Steve asks, how long until the Lord becomes Weatherby's de facto nickname in the Sharks locker room? 
I don't know. It should already be already, but we I don't I'm that, surprised so. it's just not on his nameplate, <laughs> like Lord Jasper Weatherby. Let us know any shark staffers that are listening to this if you can infiltrate the locker room for us. Please, somebody. Even if it's like one of those little like sticky like label names, they just put it right next to it. We'll pay for it. We will. I will be more than happy to pay. I'll even, I'll send you the sticker. I'll just throw yeah, that on there. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Last question: The Berserker Memorial. Uh, oh, good. There's some good ones in here. Yes. Uh, which player's mom's DMs are you sliding into next? Yours. Nice. <laughs> Has Kylie, because he doesn't spell Carl, tried Carl Jr.'s Western Bacon Cheeseburger yet? If not, why does he personally hate everyone who has suggested it, namely JD? So I haven't. I had one the other day. Okay, so for me, it's kind of out of the way because I live in like, so Vancouver, if you think like Vancouver's, well, Vancouver, there's a downtown area. I don't live downtown and it's downtown, but on like the north end of downtown. So I have to go all the way through downtown to get there and I have to go across a bridge. So you have to go so uptown it's... and downtown? No, no. Well, I it's north downtown. of downtown. You have to go up. It's on the north side of downtown. Shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to explain geography here. Everybody's favorite part of every podcast is geography. It's in a really hard to reach area. Well, it's like kind of annoying to reach area. So I haven't done it. I don't really eat a ton of fast food anyway. Uh, well, except for McDonald's. I haven't eaten McDonald's in a couple of weeks. Mm. What What are you, my mom? <laughs> what was that mm for? <laughs> Sliding when in I, the DMs. <laughs> when, I, when I'm when I'm when I'm hung over, I'll have some McDonald's. Uh, yeah. But I don't I don't eat a, a ton of fast food on the regular basis anyway. I have Whole Foods every day for lunch uh, with a kombucha. It's like a douchebag. Uh, so I haven't had it yet. I will though. I will have it before. Why do you personally hate everyone here? <laughs> uh, because the world is a cruel place. Where's the taco? On the uh, ice. I don't think for much longer, though. That was a bad game. <laughs> he's probably, well, I guess by the time you hear this, he's in St. Louis right now. So he's hopefully he doesn't die on the way back to his home planet <laughs> of Finland. Black armor versus stealth jerseys. I don't care for black jerseys, but I have a black armor one. So maybe I also armor. have a black armor one. And don't you have a stealth too? I do not have a stealth. Oh, I do have a stealth jersey. I have an Eric Carlson stealth. Yeah, Eric Carlson stealth. What do you mean? Yeah. You love that and jersey. I just got uh, Chase just got a uh, a Brent Burns stealth jersey as an early Christmas present. So, so you're a stealth. Uh, you're a stealth guy. Well, they were that one was on sale, so he got. That's why he got that one. So, black He's, armor will always. I have a picture. I think on like my Facebook or something like that of Logan Couture doing a double knee slide with his stick in the air and everybody cheering during the playoffs and they wore yeah. the black armor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think. I, I, I'm not a big black jersey guy, especially for the Sharks. So I'll go black armor. Yeah, I'll go black armor. I think just for the nostalgia. Anyway, that is it. Is Kyle. that it? We reached. We made it. Uh, we made it. Through the people gave back. us content and we in turn spit out different content. Repackaged content for the people <laughs> is what we give them. Yes. If you we would turned, like to ask us. We turned what? the top rated Sharks podcast into a tie with Allied Sharks podcast. <laughs> God, that's so forced. And table time. <laughs> you forgot table time. Tank time. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Octon Sharks is in a tie for six with tank time and Allied Biscuit. Uh, if you would like to tell us Simpsons jokes on the internet, you can do that at Locked on Sharks on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. JD puts up all our works. You can get at us there, Locked on Sharks. Uh, YouTube, if you'd like to subscribe and see us laughing at our own jokes like idiots, you can do that. Uh, at YouTube, <laughs> Locked on Sharks. <laughs> That's YouTube.com if you're unfamiliar with the massive video sharing site. Uh, When's YouTube going to come out and film this? <laughs> One of my favorite office jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What is, I, think we're, I think we're more rated for you, porn. <laughs> uh, if you would like to uh, email us, you can do that at Locked on Sharks at gmail.com. Uh, thank you for your service if you have not. Listen to us, Amazon Music, Apple, Google, Spotify. Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Virgin Radio, Sirius XM, Shade 45. <laughs> yeah, we're on Shade 45 now, believe it or not. Vinyl, we're pressing our own vinyl, so you can listen to this episode in, in May 2020. 2021. 22, I don't know, whatever. 2022? I said 2020. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're going backwards, baby. JD, is that my fry hole? Kyle at Kyle Demetrius. Thank you for making us your first listen. Uh, go Sharks. I don't know. No, bye, Sharks.